We're 10 seconds away on take two. Dave Ferrucci is a nervous parent. He spent the last four years building a revolutionary new computer, and it's about to face its biggest test in front of an audience of millions. Hello, my name is Watson. I hope we will have a good game today, but first I have to test my voice. When the cameras roll, the computer called Watson will make history as it competes on the popular quiz show, Jeopardy. Jeopardy! It's frightening, right? I mean, it's, it's a different experience. It's a very different experience for a scientist to sit here and you know, have this happen live. Six, five, four. Ferrucci has reason to fear. Watson is playing for a million dollar jackpot against the game's toughest competitors. Brad Rutter, Jeopardy's biggest money winner. And Ken Jennings, famous for winning 74 consecutive games. There's some contestants pride. I want to beat my human competition, but you know, as a species, I would like mankind to, uh, to beat the big bad computer. Let's finish leaders of World War II. All right. This big bad computer is the culmination of four years intensive work. IBM has put Watson through hundreds of practice games with a stand-in host and real contestants. After Germany invaded the Netherlands, this queen, her family, and cabinet fled to London. Maria. Who is Beatrix? No. Watson? Who is Wilhelmina? That is correct. It's a human standing there with their carbon and water versus the computer with all of its silicon and its main memory and its disk. It seems like it should be easy for the computer to win with its enormous memory and processing power. But the human brain makes an intimidating opponent, especially on Jeopardy. Jeopardy questions are tricky. They have puns in them, they have little jokes in them. Just understanding the question is a pretty big deal. This trusted friend was the first non-dairy powdered creamer. Watson? What is milk? <laughs> no. Maria? What is coffee, mate? Thank you. Humans communicate very fluently in you know, natural language, and that's where computers struggle dramatically, right? Now, Watson is on the verge of conquering that challenge. Here we go. A garment worn by a child, perhaps aboard an operatic ship. Watson? What is henna for? <laughs> yes, how did you get that? If Watson wins on Jeopardy, it will be a major breakthrough in a quest that's gone on for decades. The audacious dream to build a machine as smart as a person. The quest for artificial intelligence, AI. My brain is bigger than yours. When we started doing uh, AI, the goal was, why can't we build a person? We all know how to make people, that's easy. What if we could build one out of silicon? Pioneers drew their inspiration from the world of science fiction. As a child, Isaac Asimov turns up. So here I'm a adolescent, and, and the robots, intelligent machines, are, are part of my life. Your service. Let's, let's see about getting them built. In the early days, computers grew rapidly more powerful, quickly mastering complex equations. The first programs we wrote at MIT it solved problems that only very educated people could solve, like problems in calculus or, and then algebra. The computer pioneers thought they were on a fast track to building human-like intelligence. I confidently expect that within 10 or 15 years, we will find emerging from the laboratories something not too far from the robot of science fiction fame. In the beginning, we thought, well, maybe 10 or 15 years, and we'll have something that's really smart. In the beginning, people really were amazed at how much computers could do. When you see something is improving very fast, you simply assume it will continue improving that fast indefinitely. In the 60s, confidence was so high, it inspired one of the most iconic film characters of all time. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. When I was a kid, I saw 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Hal was just the best thing ever. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. You know, it was a murdering psychopath. Hal? Al. 
but it was intelligent, could talk to people, could see people, could lip read, could do all this stuff. A machine that could do that, and I'd never even seen a real computer at that time. I was mesmerized. I was instantly mesmerized by the character Hal. There's this one part in the movie where one of the actors in the movie is sketching quietly, and Hal asks him, Have you been doing some more work? A few sketches. May I see them? He says, oh, I'm sketching. And he says, can you show me the sketch? And he holds it up. Sure. Can you hold it a bit closer? That's when I got goosebumps, because that's such a human thing to say. I think you've improved a great deal. And I said, this is wonderful. What does it take? What does it take to build something like this? Bishop takes night's pawn. More than 40 years after the creation of HAL, no one has answered that question. No real computer or robot has been able to interact with humans as seamlessly as Hollywood imagines. Tell me, what is love? The problem is our own human computer, the brain, a complex entity that's defied any attempts at replication. We just had no idea how sophisticated the brain was. The computer has always been king when it comes to calculation and processing huge amounts of data. Pen is in the pen. What's the middle letter? E. e. But simple skills that humans master early in life, like understanding language or recognizing objects, continue to baffle researchers. You know, people uh, vastly misjudged how subtle we are when we're intelligent. People just hugely underestimated that. But the dream of building a computer that could talk and match wits with humans never really died. And a few years ago, a new plan was hatched, sparked by an unlikely event. This is Jeopardy! In Wagner's operas, this eldest Valkyrie is stereotypically dressed in a horned helmet and breastplate. Ken. Who's Brunhilde? Correct. In 2004, Ken Jennings' 74-game winning streak on Jeopardy set the country abuzz and caught the eye of an IBM executive while out to dinner. All of a sudden, the entire restaurant cleared out to the bar that I'm sitting at to go see Ken Jennings. This grand old Opry comedy star used to wear a straw hat with the $1.98 price tag still attached. Ken. Who's Minnie Pearl? Minnie Pearl. Howdy. Charles Licker wondered if a computer could ever play as well as Ken Jennings. So he pitched the idea to some of IBM's top scientists. For the ones that knew Jeopardy, they said, Charles, that's just too hard. I think the, the prevailing view was, um, you know, th these questions were, were difficult to understand, difficult to even comprehend what was being asked. Yeah, I was like, no way. I was like, no way. But one researcher, Dave Ferrucci, was intrigued. My view was, maybe this isn't as completely impossible as we think it is. And now... For over 40 years, Jeopardy has been pop culture's IQ test. Clues are given as answers and contestants have to respond in the form of a question. Mother's 1600. It's a larger vessel that guards and supplies smaller ones. Christina. Was a mothership? Mothership, yes. And mother the show Central Conceit is a little syntactic reversal whereby they give you an answer and you supply a question. You don't say, George Washington, you say, who is George Washington? To win, contestants need to be human encyclopedias. Because it's essentially everything under the sun. First in this round. You know the categories at the same second Alex tells the folks at home the category. One, you have to have a broad knowledge because we have 13 categories on each show. Kate, start. Uh, PH for 400. For the record, Thomas Edison invented the first practical one of these in 1877. Contestants also have to be fast. Ariel. What is the phonograph? Good. They typically have three seconds or less to come up with an answer. The mortar and pestle is a symbol of this profession. Ariel. What is a pharmacist? Pharmacist is right. To compete on Jeopardy, IBM's computer must have an enormous knowledge base because it will not be connected to the internet. But the far bigger challenge for the machine will be understanding clues, which can be extremely convoluted or obscure. You'll find this flower before pickle bottom in a line of handbags and bedding. And that would be petunia. Back to you, Ariel. There will be a lot of puns. There will be uh, double meanings. You know, and these were things that computers historically are terrible at. Human language is a minefield for computers. Consider this sentence. How's it go? I shot an elephant uh, wearing my pajamas. 
was I wearing the pajamas? Was the elephant wearing the pajamas? Right. So there's different interpretations, different ways to parse the sentence. The word shot, you know, what, what, what's really going on there? There's already ambiguity in there. It could actually be shooting, sort of a hunting shooting. Well, if I'm a photographer and I'm immersed in that context, I may interpret that as shooting with a camera. Which one did I mean? So you have to look at the context. But a computer has no context. It's just an electronic brain in a box. In 2006, Ferrucci tackles this challenge, along with the best and brightest programmers from IBM and the country's top AI labs. The way we solve this is actually... To start, they run a test. We had an um, existing state-of-the-art system that people had worked on for a number of years, and we tried applying that to the Jeopardy challenge. They feed one of IBM's most sophisticated computer programs hundreds of Jeopardy questions, like this one. In 1698, this comet discoverer took a ship called the Paramore Pink on the first purely scientific sea voyage. The correct answer is who is Edmund Haley. The computer says, who is Peter Sellers? The computer ran a search through a million documents, looking for key words from the clue. It homed in on a description of one of the Pink Panther films, in which one character was a paramour or mistress. The star of the movie, Peter Sellers. It's probably the last answer a human would come up with, but it's typical for computers. The team has a long way to go. Just how far becomes clear when they compare the computer to the best human players. They create a graph called the cloud, each dot represents a Jeopardy! champion's performance. Jennings is at the top. What you see is a cloud that's around, they answer around 50%, the winners do, and they get around 90% correct. And where is the computer in this cloud? If we ask it to answer all the questions, it would be 10% of the questions right. You can't go on Jeopardy! like that. I mean, the best humans, they're 90%, 92%. We weren't even close. To win at Jeopardy!, the team will need a whole new way to tackle human language, one that takes advantage of the computer's basic strengths. At its electronic core, a computer speaks a very simple language, binary code, on or off. But with that simple code, it can follow instructions and solve complex problems, once reserved for intellectual giants. It used to be the case that intelligence was chess, right? If you can play chess, that's intelligence. Computers have mastered the game. Chess is easy for computers because the rules are very well defined and very clear. The rules of chess are relatively simple, a board of 64 squares. Each piece, pawn, knight, queen, can move a certain way. And there's a single goal, take out your opponent's king. For humans, it is the ultimate game of strategy. The way computers play chess is not at all the way people play chess. We humans look at the board and have conceptual ideas like control the center, attack on the right. Very different from the way computers play chess. A chess-playing computer looks at virtually every possible move it could make and every response every way the game could play out. Computers play chess through searching a tree of moves down to a very deep level, looking ahead on every possible path, but they do it by brute force, by going 20, 30, 40 moves ahead and seeing all the bad things that can happen. A person can't look that many moves ahead broadly. This is the power behind the most famous chess game in the history of AI, when in 1997, another IBM computer named Deep Blue beat the reigning world champion, Gary Kasparov. The chess world champion walked away from the match, never looking back at the computer that just beat him. The victory makes Deep Blue look pretty smart. But is it? Deep Blue, it's only acting as if it's intelligent. It's not really intelligent in the way that we humans are. It's good at one thing, it's playing chess can't do anything else. There's no other understanding in the world. It's just about chess moves. 